So guys and gals, just be sure to play around with the expected conditions class. Find out all of the available options. You can always, like I said, just uh, F12 it. And then you can see all of the different possible expected conditions. And then you can utilize them for different kinds of situations, whatever you need to happen. One other thing that I did want to show you guys is what happens when this uh, query, the wait dot until, fails. And so if we F12 there and uh, look at what this does is, and we expand it, you can see that it throws openqa.selenium.webdriver timeout exception. So this exception is thrown whenever it's unable to locate your element. So for example, if I was to put that to one second and then run this test, And right, I'm putting it to one second, which means that our explicit wait is going to wait for only a single second before timing out. And then the expectation is that the test failed because it couldn't find it within the right interval. And so if we look here, you can see that we have a message and then our openqa.selenium.webdriver timeout exception. And then the, it says that unable to locate element. And then it says which element it was looking for. So that's the exception that's thrown whenever our wait.until method fails, okay? So I'm going to set this back to 10 seconds. And I do have a quiz for you guys that I wanted to see if you fully understand uh, everything that we have covered. So here we have four examples of explicit weights. Right, we have our thread.sleep example. We have a dynamic uh, explicit weight that polls every 500 milliseconds to see when an element comes back. We have another explicit weight that uses the longer implementation of the web driver weight constructor. And we have the smaller implementation of the web driver wait constructor that just takes the driver and how long you want to wait before an element uh, times out. So with all those four methods, and there's obviously others you can, you know, try to make up your own, but there's no need. These are basically all the implementations that you would ever use. But with all of those four timeouts, if I come up here, okay, and Actually, if I go to my test explorer and I select all of these four explicit weights and I run the select the tests, which one of them is going to be the slowest? And be sure to take a look at all of the methods and see what's going on here. And when you come back, I'm going to give you the answer.